I am privileged to get this opportunity to introduce our honorable distinguished guest, Dr. Bhagwan Prakash. His achievements are nothing less than miracles. Dr. Bhagwan Prakash is an icon of simplicity in lifestyle who has contributed immensely towards Atma Nirbhar Prat through his untiring service in the education sector. A self-made person, his work life began as a small school teacher when he was only 16 years. From this humble position, he rose to become an international advisor and policymaker at the United Nations and senior advisor in the Election Commission of India. With two masters in English language and sociology, interdisciplinary PhD from Uttar University. Dr. Bhagwan Prakash is an author and a popular columnist having contributed more than 350 articles in reputed newspaper and journals and a recipient of several literary awards. His regular column, Biklapa Bisho in the Sambad, is considered an encyclopedia in the field of social change and human development. As the country chief of the National Service Scheme, NSS, in the then HRD and Youth Ministry, he built this 4 million strong world's largest student youth volunteers, volunteers force, brick by brick. He had a key role in reducing minimum voting age from 21 years to 18 years by amendment of Indian Constitution, 61 Constitutional Amendment Act, 1988. He contributed immensely in halting and reversing the HIV AIDS pandemic in India. The Planning Commission also nominated him twice as a member of its national working group. He joined as a senior advisor in the youth ministry with one rupee salary for three years. He was the first founder chairperson of the, of the now famous environment center, Sambhav, in Odisha, in addition to establishing the Odisha Nagarika Samaj, a civil society platform. A well-known institution builder, he was instrument in establishing two national and one international institution. His contribution to other reputed constitution institutions include National Disaster Management Authority, Helpage India, Center for Youth and Social Development, CYSC, the Intellect Forum in Delhi for Odia, Intellectual, etc. As a social reformist, he continuously wrote and spoke against various superstitions and social evils, and his outstanding contribution was recognized by various national and international organizations, includes many hours. President of this program, Mr. Jagadanand, um, founder of Mamata, Professor Bija Misra. And there are many friends I see before me. I have heard that see Vivek Patnak is also here, Subhas Pani is also here. So and many friends are here. So what I will do today in the next 20-25 minutes to give you my own perception about development and the challenges to the human development in our country, in the world. In a very briefly, I was associated with Mamta and Shishitsulan Sumistra, uh, and I have attended their programs a number of times, which they organize very sincerely with a lot of devotion. Um, I always refer to Sudan Subhavu and Vijaya Mistra as Basisto and Arundhati. I had my own regions, although they were feeling embarrassed. Once Sudan Subhavu also asked me, why do you call me Basisto? Uh, so <clears throat> I said that Basisto was the political advisor, social advisor and spiritual advisor of Lord Rama. He was advisor to 
he was also advisor to dasarath he was also advisor to dasarath's father ajay he was also advisor to ajay's father raghu so for four generations he was the political social economic advisor spiritual advisor to the to the to the family of lord rama and similarly sudhan subhavu uh, in his long career um he has seen many he has served and seen and advised many chief ministers cabinet ministers and uh, he had a reputation today the day we have to remember that he was not a run of the mill bureaucrat he was very different in his approach very different different in his attitude and he is one of the few um, bureaucrats bureaucrats who have escaped the indian bureaucracy which we call the indian steel frame without his honor being tainted very clean record and what was the success he was a very very amiable person very effective person and a person who had a great understanding of development issues and that is the reason why he was popular you see it is said that bureaucracy is like uh, um a giant uh, machine uh, run by pygmies and uh, i would not say who was a pygmy and who was a giant but it is true that in indian bureaucracy we find very very few people like few people who you can call giants also like sudhan subhav sudhan subhishra um he was using his power and authority with a lot of uh, thinking a lot of understanding a lot of consideration it is said there are three types of powers and a development oriented bureaucrat if he can combine all the three he is the best bureaucrat and sudhan sahu was one of them what are the three powers one is positional power the position one holds and by virtue of holding a position uh, he exercises certain powers because it is he the his power he derives his power from position so he sudhan sahu was occupying a great position very powerful position you are the number one broker out of the orissa bureaucracy uh, you are the chief secretary you are the principal secretary uh, so many uh, such positions he held but wherever he went whatever positions he held he never showed his power and authority he very quietly served the people so that is why he was a giant among the pygmies and we have many pygmies you have seen i have seen um small minded people very narrow with very narrow vision and that is why sudhan swabhu is a very unique so that is the i which i call the the positional power how you use your position and the power derived by, by your position to help people so that is one the second power i say is the professional power positional power professional power professional power is the knowledge the, the skill the wisdom the scholarship which you have so that is your professional power we have a saying in sanskrit so they say pujyate raja vidwan sarvatra pujyate a professional is the vidwan uh so he is not limited to any particular area so he exercises his power through his knowledge through his experience through his you know innovation through his and through his uh, own perception and vision 
that is the person that the professional power professional power remains with you positional power doesn't remain with you it comes and it goes whereas the professional power stays with you so that is the second type of power and the third type of power uh, we say is the personal power personal power the people with personal power don't have the don't have, are not professionally competent they are not uh, they don't have the positional power but personal power is their honesty their morality their sincerity their endurance so that is their personal power gandhi was not a great professional he didn't have the professional power uh, he didn't have the positional power but he had the personal power uh, by virtue of his personal power he was controlling many minds so that is the meaning so all these three power three different powers sudan swabu was a combination of all three although he was predominantly in the development administration but he had thorough knowledge of the job he was doing and he was never shy of consulting others taking ideas from others so that is the uh, region uh, we now uh, remember uh, sudhan swabu today and the memorial lecture memory gives life to those who no longer exist with us sometimes the things we remember we remember uh seem to be more real than the things we see so that is why there is a four principle l principle uh which we can uh think in the context in today's context in the context of sudan swamis memorial one is the 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 first one is the living how a person was living how was his lifestyle uh, gandhi used to say my life is my messes so sudhan swabu for sudhan swabu nobody question this but he would have said the same thing his life was his messes so living loving the people he loved and the people who loved him uh, the things he liked the things he didn't like uh, so that also decides your character your personality living loving learning the kind of experience you have uh, so that is your learning and uh, uh, the fourth one is legal legacy and we are sitting here all of us sitting here and listening to each other just to remember the legacy left behind by sudan swabu so i am happy that mamta is um, um, carrying forward the legal legacy very very well and uh, definitely i sudan swabu will be happy in heaven he will be very happy in heaven looking at this kind kind of activities which mamta has been doing it was mamta was his brain child and he would, he would definitely very happy so friends coming to <coughs> development and challenge mm. so uh, when you speak about development uh, it is a very very a, um, very a, um, common word now uh, which was um, on common 100 years ago but very common everywhere we speak about development um say uh, first thing the highlights jodaranand uh, babu asked about the highlight the highlight i will, I will limit that when you think about any development program we think including mamata when think about any development program three things we have to keep in our mind one is it must be economically viable second it must be socially relevant third it must be culturally acceptable let me repeat economically viable socially relevant culturally acceptable let us go back to 50 years ago or about say say 70 80 years ago and uh, you might have observed 
development was not a very popular word and it was not being used frequently by people so it came through a process when india became independent after indian independence within 20 years another 60 to 70 countries became independent so uh, there was a change perceptible change in the perception uh, around the world around the world so not only men and women have contributed to development but uh, the birds and beasts and uh, even the seeds uh, and trees have also contributed greatly to development so let me tell you first you know about other the contribution of others so let me tell you about the seeds henry how how about he has written a very very popular very interesting informative book i would recommend all of you to go through if you have time you, the seeds of change how the seeds have changed this world the entire scenario the development scenario of the world the freedom scenario of the world the the autonomous uh, autonomy scenario of the world and how they also contributed to the spread up of colonization a simple very simple um bark uh, called sinkona was responsible for the colonization of the entire southeast asia chinese the poppy seeds opium chinese just sold their tea to england england sold their in exchange england gave them sold them opium and as a result the china entire china was a uh, reduced to a banana republic so the it was divided into several pieces because people consumed regularly consumed opium went to sleep and went to from a rather slumber and they lost the independence that is how china was colonized the and the only the, the responsible um, for this was another seed the pop poppy seeds opium similarly when quinine was um, um found out so it also contributed to the colonization of many countries because people from the west were coming to conquer these lands and colonize these lands they were unable because they were dying in thousands out of malaria and once malaria was controlled it was easier for them to control many countries uh, and that led to migration internal migration external migration migration from one country to another and along with migration the change of culture happened people adapted adapted uh, to the value system to the culture systems of other countries so that is how that is how the seeds many seeds take for example sugar cane sugar cane contributed to the slave trade in africa and in thousands uh, and thousands africans who were taken as slave to america and who developed that they developed america as a strong country they led the railways they led the roads they dug the canals and the entire america was the beneficiary of the slave trade which was again contributed by a simple seed so uh, if you go deeply you'll find out how some very very small things have uh, changed our uh, the, the development scenario in the world for example t t was responsible for the uh, american independence it's a long story which i don't have time uh, to to tell you but you this is known uh, to many so friends uh, you might have i was telling you again uh, telling you about uh, i will again take you back uh, to 18th century 19th century and 20th century the, the mid after the indian freedom and uh, some followed by the freedom of so many countries several countries so many countries what happened 
So uh, these uh, um, uh, there are uh, around the world, uh, particularly the the world which uh, were freed recently from the colonial rules. So there are movements. Hmm. People started protesting against the government. Government collapsed. Governments fell down. Including uh, the great powerful government in Indonesia, in many other countries, there are student protests, youth youth, pro youth protest, and many uh, other kinds of uh, political movements. Uh, uh, movements. So, um, uh, so then. Uh, when these uh, countries which, gave, which got their freedom very recently uh, and very young countries in terms of independence, when the people in those countries stood up in revolt against their government, then there was a rethinking in the government that there is something wrong probably. And that is why for the first time there was a realization that probably our programs our schemes and programs are not working properly. And why these are not working properly? When Gandhi came to India in 1915, and for one year he moved around the country, walked the country, and met people. So after one year of travel uh, in the grassroots India, in the rural India, when he returned to M Mumbai, so there is a press conference in which one journalist asked Gandhi, so now you have seen, the, uh, seen India in your own eyes, and how is this country? What is your learning? What did you see? What is your feeling? Can you express in one sentence? So Gandhi said one thing. He said, I was greatly disappointed by the indifference and apathy of the educated Indians. So it was a loaded statement, uh, which, and it's very clear you understand its meaning uh, when he said that I was greatly disappointed by the heartlessness, um, apathy, and the indifference of the educated Indians. So then to to engage why such a thing happens. When India became independent, we started, launched many programs, many schemes for development, but still development did not take place. So India, fortunately at that time, we used to have a very strong civil society sector. The people in the civil society also came out with their own ideas, their own innovations. And the first word which was repeatedly used was the felt need. Probably our programs are not based on the felt need of the people. That's why we are failing. So this word continued. It became a buzzword for 10 years. Nothing happened. Then this word was replaced by another word, another term, another concept. It was called participation. So participation was considered the buzzword the next 10 years. The, without participation, the pro when the program is organized, it should be, people must participate in it. Uh, without people, uh, so United Nations also defined the, what is participation and what is development. They say development without participation is a development scene, is a social scene. Development without women is a is a, is, a, is a scene. Development without, without youth uh, is a scene. Development without infrastructure is a scene. 
So, like this, there are seven sins of development United Nations identify that unless and until these sins are removed, uh, then uh, no, uh, removed, we, 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 there is no, no, no hope for development in our country. So then, so this continued, <laughs> this kind of debate continued in, at various circles. And it's, this is also adopted by United Nations. United Nations organize a number of conferences, seminars on development. Mr. Jagadanand uh, attended one of these, one of these uh, social development summit. The discussion all over all over the world: social development, gender became a development issue. Gender was never discussed hundred years ago, but gender suddenly became an issue, a great issue. Uh, access to professional opportunities, access to uh, access to economic opportunities, access to women's access to decision making processes. So these were uh, these were uh, recommended by various international conferences. So friends, so this is how. Uh, but development. Then there, there is another word in 1980s, which also became very very popular. It's still popular. It is empowerment. Uh, um, then it was said that without empowerment, development uh, cannot take place. The people are not empowered. Then there is a discussion about the income poverty, discussion about capability poverty. So you may not have income poverty, you may have a lot of money, but if you are not educated, if you are not healthy, then that is another kind of poverty. There is a criteria of ill-being and criteria of well-being. So throughout the world in various forums, you might have observed these kind of debate and discussion all over the world, all over the world. And then let me tell you a few personal experiences. The, the, but before that, the, uh, the United Nations also had made an attempt to define development. They, say they, say they fixed four parameters of development. One, productivity. There cannot be, we cannot think of development without productivity, without wealth creation. So we have to produce, increase our capacity for productivity and wealth generation. But only wealth generation and productivity is not enough. Then the second parameter was added. The second parameter was equity. Because if the wealth created the productivity which you achieve, if the products are not properly distributed to the people who need it most, so then there is no development. So equity, the second principle. Third, third principle was empowerment. The, without empowerment, people cannot access to the development benefits. So that is why they must be empowered. So that is the third principle which is adopted. And the fourth principle was sustainability. No development without sustainability. Now United Nations has accepted. Now they have they have now describing sustainable development as the goal of real development. So these are some of the things which you which I wanted to tell you, but to give you one or two experiences. I was working in Kalahandi and um, um, then there was a, an invitation. We organized, uh, I was working in Kalahandi as the youth coordinator long ago, long, long ago. And uh, we organized uh, a Jyoti competition uh, for uh, the tribal girls. You know, tribals are very, very, tribal girls are very good, very, they do very good. Uh, um, Jyoti, um, they draw tribal houses are the, the paintings which you see, these are fingerprints. Uh, with their fingers, they create beautiful houses, the tribal girls. So we reached that, vill that village, tribal village, and a large number of people who came to see us. All in the radio was with us. They were recording the event. At that time, television was not in, and had not come to India. So then they started dancing. You know, welcoming us, they started dancing and singing. So they saw this, they, they, they sang a song. 
uh, which I still remember, I would like to share with you. They said, Juri Desan Ghare Randhi. Jai Fulo, Juri Desan Ghare Randhi. Dekho, dekho, ama sarkar er buddhi. Nai sikhano Juri Dhara buddhi. Juri Desan Ghare Juri is the small fish. Uh, in Western Odisha, people uh, call Juri uh, small, small fish as Juri. So, Juri Desan Ghare Randhi. Yeah. Among Horuko Asikiri, these uh, uh, the, the government workers, what they do, they come, they Amuku, Macho, Bhajikiri, Macho, Randikiri, Patrick, Paideki, Jausunti. But nine Sikana Zuridaraputi. Into Amku Macho came Goriva Sikona. So this was a great message. When you said they felt need. I mean, tribal welfare, they take Korucham, they say. But I mean, so, how much we think about whether uh, they need it. Yeah. So, the first agenda in any development is to assess the need assessments, to assess the needs of the people, the felt need of the people. Mm. Whether people need it, what we are doing. Dekha dekha amo sarkar budi, dekha amo sarkar kette budiya. Amgu Macha Jurisa Tunamacha Doria to Sikonanti, a Gore Antiki de Yosundi. This was the this was the comment commentary on our development system, our program implementation system by tribal girls uh, in the remote Kalahandi. So this was this carries a great message. In eighties. In eighties. In eighties. Yes. In eighties. Uh, and Kalahandi used to be one of the poverty pockets. Uh, of the world, there are four poverty pockets in the world, one in Caribbean countries, two in Africa, and one in Asia. And that one was, one is Asia, and the, the, that one in Asia was India, and that one in India was Kalahandi, a pocket uh, called Thwarmul Rampur, which was one of the four poverty pockets of the world. And some Report, reports which you know based on my knowledge about the, about the things. But one very interesting thing I must share with you about the development is when we entered the third millennium, the second millennium was over and 2001 we entered the third millennium. There was a millennium survey uh, around the world done by a very reputed magazine, Focus magazine. In the Focus magazine, they asked people that you prepare a list of 100 inventions and discoveries which have changed the face of the world, or this, this was the question. And there are 30,000, sorry, 20,000 uh, responders. Uh, and that included doctors, uh, engineers, professors, office officers, women organizations, scientists, various types of people samples. Uh, 20,000 samples created. So you prepare a list and people prepared the list and submitted the list. So many people like us at that time, we expected probably the printing press will be number one invention. Uh, some, but some people thought that, you no, know, it may be the wheel and the fire because after the invention of wheel and uh, fire, the great changes have taken place. Then some said it should be uh, nuclear uh, power, nuclear energy. Like this, there, there are many expectations. You will not believe the outcome of this survey was very, very significant. And it was, uh, we were all taken aback. Uh, one item received the maximum vote and that was the modern toilet system with floss latrine. That was adjudged by the maximum number of people as the most important item which has changed the face, changed the civilization of our times. So that was the uh, result. Many people are surprised, shocked, pleasantly surprised because toilet system, nobody thought the toilet system with fast latrine will emerge. Because what happened, 
this toilet system with flush latrine it liberated millions of people from very dirty job uh, uh, carrying the night soil head loads of night soil in the open so many people were liberated poor people they were liberated and uh, the probably it was the first uh, i uh, step towards civilization uh, to claim that we are civilized people uh, so that was uh, the story which i wanted to share with you there are many such stories but we have no time i have to very interesting stories uh, um so uh, let me finish it here uh, development is a very very interesting subject very dynamic subject um and as we open our eyes eyes as we see people we learn from them many new things i have learned in my life many things not by not many things in the classroom but many things by interaction with the people when you interact with the people then you will learn new ideas uh, so that is one thing uh, and these learnings are great learnings i one one learning i jagadamba can you give me one more minute sir one minute that's it thank you sir so one minute for me 60 seconds so i will i I'll, in one minute i will tell you a very interesting experience in singapore uh, a taxi driver in singapore uh, i was uh, uh, i have had booked him to meet my friend singaporean friend uh, and we spent a uh, lot of time i asked my friend singaporean friend he was a chinese i asked him say what are the problems of young people in your country he said the problems of the young people in the country are six types of problems our young people are ahead of us ahead of times and one thing he mentioned, mentioned that i in short brief i will tell you they are just like the ripe banana so what is ripe banana so i was it is a very mysterious uh, reply i said i i didn't understand can you explain he said ripe banana means white inside and a yellow outside uh, we are chinese so we our skin is yellow but inside our people are very westernized inside they are white so i returned it was a great learning lesson from him then he said uh, about the six society he said our young people are not interested in development they are interested in self development uh, and they say they are they have adopted this there is a six c principle so their priority is not development their priority to have how to have a car a credit card cash condominium uh, club membership so these are they they are obsessed with this so they have no time for to think about development so while i was returning or the returning i asked the taxi driver he was a chinese looking taxi driver he he gave me a lesson which i still remember and i still try to follow i learned a great lesson from this taxi driver i asked him you are looking like a chinese are you a buddhist he said no i am not a buddhist i am not a buddhist uh, then i asked him are you are you a, uh, are you uh, a muslim he said no i am i am not a muslim I, but uh, i follow the best principle of principles of islam i follow the best principles of buddhism then i said you are you a hindu he said no i am not a hindu but i have studied hinduism and i am in, i have fallen in love with your hinduism but i will not i said why do you, then 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 any any plan to become a hindu he said no, no i have no plan to become a hindu uh, then i asked him then what is what are you what is what is your religious identity he said i have no religious identity i am a free thinker uh, i am a free thinker so uh, friends <coughs> with this great lesson which i learned from a taxi driver i would like to like to end my presentation my talk here thank you once again